Welcome to this brief introduction on requirements elicitation. My name is Christoph Ebert and I will guide you through this introduction. Requirements elicitation matters and it is about having the right requirements, delivering value, making sure that what we are doing is in line with expectations, with needs. Think about yourself. How often have you ended up in a shop where you wanted to buy something and became so convinced by speaking with the shop clerk that you ended up buying something else? I know it from myself. As an engineer, I typically make rather long specifications if I want to have a new smartphone, a new car or any other gadget. And then I have a look at it and suddenly I realize, hey, there are things which I not, e not even thought about. And these things is exactly what matters. Steve Jobs once made a very good observation here. He said, a product is good enough when there's nothing left to be cut out. That's what we always have to keep in mind. Value is not about the amount of requirements and features. Value is about the right requirements and features. Elicitation helps us to identify, to develop the needs and distill the requirements. Elicitation is certainly not collecting requirements. That would be trivial. Everybody could do that. That means we talk to a prospective user, ask him, what do you need? He would give us a long wish list. Now that's not requirement solicitation. What is much more relevant is what user experience do we want to deliver? What is our brand standing for? What kind of features are relevant? And this has to be done methodologically. Let me show you in a brief grid what it really means. And for that matter, let us take two perspective. The perspective of our customer, that's the person or the group of stakeholders which really matters. Value exists only in the eye of the beholder. Value is never something we define as a supplier. So we have to look into what is known to the customer, what is unknown to the customer. And we have to look into what is known to us or unknown. The known knowns often generate a lot of ideas, features, requirements, but not necessarily those which really matter. Those things which Mike has show, shout, wow, that is really what we have to address. And these are few, but these are the unknown unknowns, something we don't know, the customer doesn't know, and where we distill. Typical practices which we deploy here would be at the bare minimum, user experience workshops, focus groups, looking into how markets can be deployed, think in terms of blue ocean, what would be features nobody has, what feature combinations could generate an extra value. Service these days is a very good example. When we deliver B2B solutions, customers increasingly think in terms of, is there any value which I have not perceived so far? Can I sell more? Can I help my own customers more with specific features? This is how we generate value with unknown unknowns. In the middle, where we have unknowns to our customer or unknowns to the supplier, that is to us, we deploy techniques such as brainstorming because that creates something new. We look into reverse engineering. We look into practices which help us to learn from others in order that we identify not just a list of requirements, but also a value attribution to these requirements, such as what I explained in another of these introductory videos about the Kano model, focus on those excitement factors which really give the value. Of course, there's a lot more to explain with respect to requirements elicitation. And for that matter, I invite you to contact us at www.vector.com slash consulting and of course we can give you much more relevant hints towards your own requirements elicitation. Thank you very much and have good success with requirements engineering. Mm -hmm.